Hey there, grade six. New lesson for you guys today. This one is called Decapolis Healing and Feeding. Uh, 4,000 people, not 5,000. This is a different story. Um, but where I want to start today is just with some different kinds of bread. And so up in the top left, we have some rice cake. Uh, in the top in the middle, we have some matzo crackers. In the top right, we have some pitas. In the bottom left, we have some, oh, what is that again? That's naan bread. It's Indian naan bread. And in the, in the uh, bottom middle, that is Armenian flatbread. And then in the bottom right, there are some tortilla, um, so some tortillas. And the only reason I'm showing you this is just to get across the idea and just a reminder that uh, bread is the main uh, food source in a lot of cultures worldwide. Uh, now, as we begin today's lesson, I want you to remember two things. Uh, the first is that uh, Jesus has compassion for the Gentiles. Okay, so that's all kinds of people, uh, Gentiles included. Secondly, uh, I want us to think back and just re uh, remember Jesus feeding the 5,000 from our last unit and just think about some of the events of that story uh, and have those in your mind as we go through our stuff today. Um, now, before the feeding happens, before the feeding of the 4,000, there is a miracle that we're going to talk about first. And so uh, as we get into there, uh, we're still in this unit, sort of in this region. Uh, uh, so we're not, in a, we're not in a Jewish region. We are in a Gentile region. Okay, so we're along the coast of the Mediterranean, and uh, we're sort of in Phoenicia kind of thing, or ancient Phoenicia. Anyway, we're going to start uh, reading Mark chapter 7, uh, verses 31 to 37. This is, again, from the message. It says, then he left the region of Tyre, went through Sidon, back to Galilee Lake, and over to the district of the Ten Towns. Some people brought a man who could neither hear nor speak, and asked Jesus to lay a healing hand on him. He took the man off by himself, put his fingers in the man's ears, and some spit on the man's tongue. Then Jesus looked up in prayer, groaned mightily, and commanded, uh, Ephaphtha, open up. And it happened. The man's hearing was clear and his speech plain, just like that. Jesus urged them to keep it quiet, but they talked it up all the more, beside themselves with excitement. He's done it all and done it well. He gives hearing to the deaf, speech to the speechless. So, a couple points to consider about this story. Uh, first of all, Jesus is communicating here, like, by a sign language, right? People are often like, well, why did he put his fingers in the guy's ear? But the guy, uh, he couldn't hear, so... Um, that's, that's how he would, you know, would want to communicate. So the man probably would have realized that Jesus was going to do something, uh, to his ears and to his tongue, because Jesus kind of does the ear thing and then the tongue thing. And so maybe the man realized that something was going to happen. Uh, secondly, uh, ephaphtha, it means be opened, right? So he's praying to heaven for those things to be open, his ears and his mouth. Uh, and just notice here again, Jesus again instructs the crowd not to tell anyone about the miracle. He doesn't want people thinking that he's only a great healer or miracle worker. However, the crowd realizes um, how great a miracle that actually was, and they are overwhelmed with how great it was, and they told uh, everybody anyway. Okay, so that's the first miracle. That's the healing of the ears uh, and the mouth. And now we're going to go on to the, the, the feeding of the large crowd. And so again, pay attention to the differences between the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000 because they're different stories, okay? So this is out of Mark chapter 8. It says, At about the same time, he again found himself with a hungry crowd on his hands. He called his disciples together and said, This crowd is breaking my heart. They have stuck with me for three days, and now they have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they'll faint along the way. Some of them have come a long distance. His disciples responded, But what do you expect us to do about it? Buy food out here in the desert? He asked, how much bread do you have? Seven loaves, they said. So Jesus told the crowd to sit down on the ground. After giving thanks, he took the seven bread loaves, broke them into pieces, and gave them to the disciples so they could hand them out to the crowd. They also had a few fish. He pronounced a blessing over the fish and told his disciples to hand them out as well. The crowd ate its fill. Seven sacks of leftovers were collected. There were well over 4,000 at the meal. Then he sent them home. He himself went straight to the boat with his disciples and set out for Dalmanutha. So, we have a few more things to consider. Uh, there are some similarities between the two stories. And I bet you th if you think hard, actually I bet if you don't even think that hard, you could probably pick out the similarities, right? 
So a few of them, people had been listening to Jesus' teachings. They were in a rural area, uh, out in the country. This one's out in the desert, basically. Uh, there was the same food, right? The bread and the fish. Uh, Jesus blesses it and broke the loaves, and the disciples served it, and they collected the baskets uh, afterward. Now, in the feeding, here's the here's the thing that's maybe a little bit different, though, that's very interesting. Uh, in the feeding of the 5,000, Mark, the gospel writer, uses a Greek word that describes the type of basket that the Jews would carry. Okay, so that's that's the first story that we learned last lesson, or last unit. Um, in the feeding of the 4,000, Mark uses a Greek word for the type of basket that the Gentiles use. And so I find that interesting because I think it reflects the different makeups of the crowds, but it may also symbolize that Jesus brought his mission first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles, which indicates that God's plan uh, is for everyone, not just Jewish people. Okay. Uh, all right. So those are all kind of the things I wanted to say about the story. Uh, things to consider, things to be thinking about as we're working on the on this activity sheet. So again, you can open up the activity sheet with Cami, answer the questions to the best of your abilities, and then just turn it in when you are done. And again, it's going to ask you to consider the story of the healing of the deaf man. Think about the... Um, similarities and differences between the feeding of the 4,000 and the feeding of the 5,000, uh, and then consider sort of a, um, about what who, who Jesus is offering salvation to. And so those are kind of the things that you are going to consider. Anyway, uh, that's all I have for this lesson. Uh, thanks for listening and paying attention, and uh, enjoy the worksheet and turn it in when you're done.